Hello YouTube, this is Gbay99, and today I'll be giving you guys a gameplay commentary on Aurelia. I've been playing League of Legends for going on 10 years now, and naturally I've unlocked a lot of stuff in this game. I own every single playable champion and have tried out nearly all of them, but for my money there is one character here who stands above the rest in terms of having just an incredibly fun and enjoyable playstyle, and that of course is none other than Aurelia. Whether you want to talk about her Q ability being able to reset on kills, which gives her this really fun mobility as well as a ton of skill expression, or if you want to talk about the heals and the stun that she has, which allows her to turn around fights if her opponent ever makes a mistake, taking what should be an insta-death on something like a gank, but then suddenly swinging it around and getting a double kill for yourself. I mean, every part of this champion is just straight up fun. The 1v1 potential she has in particular is just such a joy to experience that most Aurelia players won't even care if they win or lose a match. If they've solo killed the enemy top laner, that counts as a win for them. My personal enjoyment for this character really knew no bounds for almost a full decade. She's been my most played champion ever since season two, where currently I have 1.3 million mastery points with her. To put that in perspective, my next two highest mastery scores are a full million points lower. In season three, season four, season five, season six, and season seven, she was my most played champion in solo queue ranked back to back to back to back to back. That's five years in a row. Season seven in particular, I felt like I went pretty crazy with her playing a total of 944 games that year alone, which averages out to two and a half Aurelia games every single day, all year, no breaks. It should be mentioned, I wasn't playing Aurelia all this time because she was good, or because she was getting me high ratings or impressive scores. I am known as the perennial hardstuck diamond player. Aurelia was not getting me up to rank one, that's not why I was playing her. This grind was simply for a love of the champion. I just had such a good time playing her. Or, at least, I used to. On April 4th of 2018, eight years after Aurelia's initial release, Riot Games made the decision to do the unthinkable. They reworked Aurelia. Now originally most people were really excited for this champion update, myself included. At this point in Aurelia's life, she was starting to show her age. Her abilities were a bit clunky and outdated, so they really could use a touch-up, and initially things looked really promising. I still I it's gonna take some getting used to. This entire kid is gonna take some getting used to. Oh, but that's so satisfying, dude! The first few games people played with her new abilities on the public beta environment looked really exciting. She still had some of her old iconic abilities that were maybe just modernized, and people were still able to do quite well with her, but that's kind of what the issue ended up being. They were doing too well. Aurelia was too strong. It turns out her new abilities were just so good together that she ended up being permabanned in ranked on release. And after a while passed, she eventually received some nerfs, but nothing changed. She was still too strong, still permabanned. Riot had to nerf Aurelia multiple times before she was ever playable again. And by that point, Aurelia had been nerfed so much that she was no longer playable in her original lane. She had now turned into a mid lane assassin and could no longer be played as a top lane bruiser. This was devastating to the Aurelia community. Originally, Aurelia was meant to be this lane dominant top laner who could go toe to toe with anybody if her user was skillful enough at least, but now she couldn't be played at all in her original lane. Old matchups that used to be skill expressive joys to play like Darius or Jack became straight up counterpicks to her overnight. And personally speaking, from the perspective of somebody who spent so much time with this individual champion, I mean, I was just heartbroken and dejected from all this. Now, to give Riot credit, they eventually tried to rebuff Aurelia and just fix her a little bit so she could be played as a top laner again, but... 
By that point, it was a little bit too late for me. I had already given up on the character and felt like any more time I spent playing her would just be a bit of a waste. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who would probably say the only reason I stopped playing Aurelia was because she now takes more skill and that it's not as easy to stop a laning phase with her, which to those people I would say, Shut up. Okay, the problem with New Aurelia wasn't even that she was bad or that she was more difficult. It's that she wasn't the same original champion she used to be. Her playstyle had been completely reversed, whereas before she was all about being good in the early and mid game and then maybe falling off in the late game, but that's fine because you got to style on someone 1v1. Well, now she was just this late game scaler who you didn't get to do anything in laning phase because everybody beat you 1v1 at all your fun moments that you may have had playing her were never going to be relived again. So, I mean, it simply appeared as though I thought that, you know, Aurelia was no longer going to be that great champion I had so much fun playing for five full years. Or at least that's what I thought. In this past year, League of Legends has not been kind to me really at all. Uh, currently at time of recording this, I am in gold rating, which is pretty far off from where I had previously been hard stuck, which before it wasn't even all that impressive. Now it's downright embarrassing. Ranked has been a pretty humiliating endeavor in general that's kind of defeated my ego and forced me to reevaluate some of my preconceived notions. You know, like all those truths that you just assume are self-evident, I'm starting to question. Am I actually the best player in the world, like I think I am? Is it actually my teammates causing me to lose all these games? Is Soraka top lane actually the dumbest thing to happen to League of Legends? Except, I mean, that, that one's kind of true. But the point being, I have faced myself in the mirror, seen who I really am, and decided to reform. I am molding myself into what I should be, which is an honest, hardworking farmer. Someone who is no longer worried about dreams of fame and fortune. I just want to till my land, put in an honest day's work, and get back to my roots of climbing and raiding the good old way, which is a slow but determined grind. And as I've been on this journey of self-discovery and reevaluation, I have had to face some facts about some of those old opinions that I used to hold about champions and metas within League, questioning things like, maybe I was actually wrong about Aurelia. Maybe she isn't as bad of a champion as I thought. Maybe I was the problem after all, and if I spend some time relearning the character, maybe I can find that magic I used to have with her and relive my glory days. So I decided to be a grown up, put my ego aside and pick her up, giving my favorite old champion another shot. Okay, yeah, it didn't go well at all, but that didn't stop me. I believed now, and I, I think I can make her work if I keep at it. Oh no. Okay, things weren't going super well, but believe it or not, this was still really motivating for me. You know, whenever you lose in a game and there's one of two different paths that you can go down, the first path is you can always just say, eh, you're cheating, I quit, this game is dumb, and then give up, which obviously ends any hope of you having a fun experience right then and there. But there's always a second path you can take, which is what I found myself going down, a path where you go and say, I just lost, but let's go again. I want to rematch. Let's play some more so I can figure out why I lost. I can do better than that. Let me improve and, and give me another chance. That's where I was headed. I was slowly piecing together and remembering how I could make Aurelia work. And I had glimmers of hope that just kept on motivating me to queue up and queue up and queue up. But I couldn't quite finish the puzzle. I felt like I was so close, but I needed a little help. Now, I had gone the coaching route before and got other people to tutor me online and give me advice to help me improve as a League of Legends player, but that's something that just personally never really stuck for me. I felt like I needed something more. So feeling really lost and with nowhere else to turn, I knew what I had to do. 
So I got on a plane to South Korea in search of answers. South Korea is a mecca for League of Legends. Filled with fakers and flames, nearly all of the best League of Legends players in the world hold a Korean passport. And while some of these great Korean players have left to go to other regions, chasing riches and glory, the best top laner in the world, the position that I play, is a player named Keen of the Afrika Freaks, who still resides in the country. Now, the timeline of this trip I was taking was a little bit unlucky because it worked out that the week I would be going to Korea would be the week that the coronavirus started spreading within the country and just before the US government was about to hand down a travel warning advising citizens not to enter Korea unless it was absolutely necessary. This was absolutely necessary. The Afrika Freaks graciously allowed me to interview Keen as well as the rest of the players on their team with the condition that I make a full-fledged documentary for them as I have done with a few other teams on my YouTube channel, which it's a lot of work to make these documentaries, but I mean, a rally is worth it, so I agreed. When I entered the country, I was firstly just shocked at the beauty and culture of the place. This was my first time ever traveling to the eastern half of the world, and it was a surreally gorgeous experience. But I had to stay focused on what I came here to do, and on the third day of my trip, it was time. I was put into a car and driven a few dozen miles outside of Seoul to the Afrika Freaks team house. When I first walked in, I was nearly dumbfounded. Here they were, some of the best League of Legends players in the world. And I, a hard-stuck diamond club among them. Most of the players I had actually known from being a fan of the Afrika Freaks myself, but some of them were old veteran players that were pretty legendary within the esports scene that I was not entirely aware of until relatively recently before this trip. For example, did you know that I Love Uve, the former StarCraft pro and one of the five original Bonjwa, the greatest Brood War players of all time, that I Love Uve is the head coach for Afrika. I mean, naturally, it was a really intimidating experience experience sitting down and talking with him one-on-one. -on -one. If you aren't aware, Korea is not only famous for its highly skilled League of Legends players, but it's also well known as a unique atmosphere for PC gaming in general. Most of the youth of the country spend their days after work and school in PC cafes playing games, where most often the game of choice is naturally League of Legends. To make a League account on the Korean server though, you have to link your national ID to your account. The equivalent of that in the United States would be needing to put in your social security number to create an NA account. It's a pretty serious system that's not exactly easy for a foreigner to play games in the country, but I wasn't going to pass up an opportunity of playing with Korean pro players on their famously low ping, so naturally I thought what better of an opportunity for me to test my skill on Aurelia than to demand a 1v1 with the academy team's top laner of Afrika Freaks. And and that's exactly what I did. The rules were simple, first kill, first tower, or first person to 100 CS wins. I play Aurelia for game one and the enemy top lane is random. And the first game, Afrika's top laner got Nautilus, which is actually a pretty tough matchup for Aurelia. And I got killed at level two. Okay though, next game was gonna be easier because next game I got to choose who he had to play. I could choose any champion in the game and I tried to think of the weakest top laner that I could possibly remember, and I came up with Yumi. You know, Yumi is a champion who can only work if it's paired with another champion. There's no way that this can be played in a solo lane, right? So I got into game, I was ready and willing to crush, and I got solo killed again. Evidently, I am not a good enough player to beat a challenger Korean top lane main who plays for Afrika Freaks. Um, so I kind of didn't want to play a third game against him, but we still had one more game to play. One final opportunity for me to prove myself, and this time I got to choose who I played against. 
So I chose not the Academy Challenger top laner from Afrika, but somebody else, and we played an Aurelia mirror matchup. This was intense. Before long, I actually had some momentum and I was starting to get used to the ping of the Korean server. So I thought I might actually be able to do this. At this moment in the game, my wave was being pushed into my own tower. However, I had a chance to stack my passive on these minions and potentially go aggressive for a kill myself. If I could just kill five minions while resetting my Q every single time, I had the potential to go get a kill, win the game, then and there, become a famous Korean pro player. Everything was going so well until... I missed. I queued the wrong minion. In this moment, my heart broke. The fantastic instantaneous ping from the Korean server had completely screwed me. I lost my queue. I went on cooldown and now I was hopelessly behind back at square one. I mean, my mind was just reeling and I was trying to compose myself at which point <laughs> it was a disaster. I came into this gaming house prepared to receive a seven-figure offer to play for the Afrika Freaks as their new top laner, but I was leaving dejected. Zero to three. Like an EU versus China Grand Finals, I wasn't able to win a single game in my set against Korean challenger players. But I had to compose myself though. I still had interviews I had to do and it wouldn't be long before I could finally find the answers that I had flown halfway across the world seeking. How is someone supposed to play Aurelia in today's League of Legends? I needed to know and it was almost time to find out. Afrika's main team, as well as their academy team, had some scrimmaging to do, but after all of their practice was finished, I worked through the remainder of my interviews. The Bonjoa Ouv himself, the EU legend spirit, and finally, the man, the myth, the legend, the best top laner in the world, Keen. This was it. Here he is, just a 20-year-old Korean kid who just so happens to be more skilled than anybody else alive at my role in League of Legends. If anyone knew how to play Aurelia, it would be him. This was about the most intimidating thing I've ever done, sitting one-on-one -on -one with the best top laner in the world a few feet away from me, and I almost didn't work up the nerve to ask him such a silly question about Aurelia. I mean, I was nervous, so I tried to be professional, asking him all the regular typical interview questions first, stuff like why are bruiser players so much better than tank players, what do you think of Hashinshin, etc, etc. But right as the interview was coming to a close, I realized I couldn't pass up this opportunity, so I swallowed my pride and asked him. Uh, can you give me any tips on how to play Aurelia well? <laughs> <laughs> This was a bombshell. Professional advice from the best pro in the world in my role. I could feel my elo rising as he tactfully laid out his response. It seemed so simple in hindsight, yet genius. Instead of killing individual creeps one at a time for stacking my passive, I should work them all down to low health so I can get a sudden burst from zero to five stacks in a split second. I was giddy with excitement at my newfound buried treasure, but I tried to compose myself. I was just so happy I thanked Keen for his time and his glorious, serendipitous answer. Before long, it was time for me to leave, so I was escorted out of the Afrika team house and thanked them for everything. And of course, it wasn't long before I had to fly back home to the States and start putting in the work to bring my favorite champion back into my arsenal. <laughs>
I still have a way to go, but I'm improving, and once again, I am winning games with Aurelia. I still have some losses here and there, but every loss I get, I'm still the best player on the team, as is backed up by stat sites like OPGG, which feels pretty nice. And even if it's only been a few weeks and a few games since my return, I already have a reinvigorated love to pick up my old favorite champion once again. There's still plenty of work to be done, but I am happy and satisfied at the future laid out ahead of me, so I would publicly like to thank the Afrika Freaks for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you very much, Keen, for answering my interview questions at midnight after a long day of scrimming, and thank you everybody on my YouTube channel for supporting me and watching me go on this journey. For I am no longer who I once was. I am a new man, a man who will not complain about the state of the meta in League of Legends, a man who will not whine about how bad my favorite champion Champions are on Twitter. I have become something that I have never been before. I am an Aurelia One Trick.